Hello everyone and welcome to this R tutorial. Today we're going to be going over graphing. Um, now graphing in R is really awesome because you have so many capabilities in terms of what you can do. Um, there are really a plethora of packages you can import as well that will give you so many options in terms of creating beautiful charts um, and visualizing data a little differently than you normally would. So we're going to go into four today on um, the box whisker plot, the calendar heat map, and uh, a few correlation matrices and a violin chart. Don't worry if you don't know what any of those things are. Um, I'm going to explain them to you at a very high level. Uh, and this is just going to be going over basically what the graphs look like. We're not going to be coding any of this in because, quite frankly, if I was to do every single one of these coded in and show you how to do it, um, it would take forever. So I think this is just a better way to do it. Uh, now, what we're going to be working with in terms of data is daily stock data. And what's awesome is that you have the capability in R to manipulate uh, the data essentially in order to graph it differently than you normally would. You don't necessarily have to manipulate it either, but put it this way. If you have a simple stock chart like this, right? Normally when you graph the daily data from Yahoo Finance or whatever vendor you're using, it looks something like this. It's a line graph showing the price, um, in this case minute by minute, uh, you know, but we can actually give a better representation of our data with some of the packages in R in the graphing capabilities. And we're going to go into that today. So let's explore first the box whisker plot. And there's a reason it's called that, and it's because they literally have whiskers on the uh, plot. So. The first thing we're going to do is import all these packages. We're going to be using QuantMod for the data. Performance analytics is going to correspond to these calendar return tables right here. Um, and that's going to make sense in a second. We actually have to uh, manipulate our data in order to plot it in a certain package. Um, and ggplot is going to be the library we're going to be using in order to plot our data. Um, really cool package, a lot of capabilities, create some beautiful graphs in ggplot. So let's start. So we're going to create the stock data. Uh, and calculate the returns and as well we're going to generate a calendar returns table this is where performance analytics comes in and it's really really nice um, so I'm just gonna go over first the generic version no GG plot just standard in R um, so the calendar returns table looks something like this if I can find my cursor calendar returns table looks like this so literally you have a table that's categorized in terms of each month and we're importing monthly data this only works for month for monthly data excuse me um, so this is a really, really nice feature. It cleans it up and allows us to plot really easily. And what we can do uh, is plot this right here. And this is the generic version. And oh, wow, look, we have a box plot just like that. And this is a box whisker plot. So let me try to explain this in terms of the interpretation of this graph. So what we have here is each individual um, box, right? So each box represents the returns for the respective month. Now, this black uh, bold line right here represents the median in the data range um, so that is is corresponding to each month as well um, and what we have right here on the, on the whiskers with these lines right here this is the maximum and this is the minimum in our range for the month okay um, and the the lines right here as well right uh, it's it's uh, perpendicular to the whiskers this represents the uh, the upper quartile range and this represents the lower quartile range so interpret it as such 25% um, of the data is below the lower quartile range with 75% uh, of the data is above the lower quartile range um, now in terms of the upper conversely we have 25% above and then 75% below so you can visualize it as that um, now these uh, dots right here are outliers in terms of the expected range so they lie far 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 beyond the expected range um, as you can see the whiskers uh, they go to a reasonable length so the, these are outliers um, in your data so what we can do now is uh, reload this this stuff right here and what we can do now is create a day um, create a data set essentially that will allow us to have ggplot um, be able to plot it so ggplot will be able to understand it and if I didn't articulate that uh, nicely this is basically going to be manipulating the data frame in order so ggplot can understand it. so what we're going to do really quickly is this calendar reads.m 
is going to manipulate it from that table we saw before to a grouped table um, or, or series, I guess, if you want to say that, um, in terms of the month and year. So we can now look at this and say, okay, ggplot will be able to understand it. And this has to be done. You have to manipulate it. And that's what the reshape2 package is there for. And we can start and ignore these warning messages. Um, but this is this is what I mean by ggplot's capabilities. We can not that you can't do this in the standard box plot, but um, this ggplot is definitely the preferred way. So right here, I'm just customizing the theme, um, and also we're customizing the labels as well, and we are adding a title here, um, and we also have different colors coming in here. Uh, the transparency corresponds to the alpha. Um, and the only thing that's different in this one is that uh, we're grouping by year in this case, so we could change the the variables and the axes names. So the the group variable name is, is called obviously group. So on the uh, x-axis right here, instead of group, what we'd be using is a uh, is um, variable instead to correspond to the month. So instead of group it would be variable right here and then you get the data aggregated by month um, so yeah uh, this red dot right here represents the average in the range so we added that in um, so this is just a overall cooler more aesthetically pleasing chart and this is what you're really capable of doing with in a, a ggplot2 so yeah this is uh, the box plot and let's go over to next the calendar heat map really really cool um, so I'm gonna import all these, even though we already had a few of these imported. Whoopsie. Um, and what we're going to do is download our data for the S&P because it's representative of the entire market. Um, also, I forgot to mention these can be variable width as well to give you kind of an idea of your distribution of your data. Um, yeah. So let's calculate some stock returns. But these are gonna be daily. You'll see why. So what we're going to first examine is uh, is the ggplot version, okay? So we're going to calculate uh, some different columns within R really quickly. And what this is going to do is allow us to create, if I can get right here, stock returns. Um, what this is going to do is allow us to create three new columns now corresponding to the day. Um, let me actually go up a little bit corresponding to the week, the weekday, and the year. So we need that in order to use this uh, calendar heat function. So what we can do really quickly, just to give you an idea, this package I clicked that I downloaded um, was able to generate this really easily. And let me see if I can, uh, this isn't, this didn't take the transform data frame. So what this did essentially, I didn't even need to transform it in this case. So if I load this up again, and just to give you an idea of what a calendar heat map is, this is a really easy way to do it. ggplot is the preferred way, but let's zoom in. And this is what a calendar heat map is, guys. So um, we can look at this in terms of each year and each day. And this is kind of what it's giving you an idea of. And the heat map is basically giving you the idea of the values in terms of how, in this case, strong or weak they are. So we're looking at higher returns are connotated with... Uh, the red values. So when you when you look at these bright red values right here, you're like, oh wow, this this must have been a really high re high return that day. And that's kind of the idea behind the heat map, and it gives you that just visual aspect that makes it so nice. And the the lighter blue right here it represents the lower return. So this is the idea of the heat map, um, and we can represent this in a calendar format, which is awesome. This is really cool to put in a presentation or something like that. Uh, now this is the eye click. Uh, method that it's the maximum is six years in ggplot we have a little bit of different uh, functionality so if we reload this again and we actually manipulate our data because we need to do this in ggplot um, so in ggplot what we'll do first this is uh we're going to examine it by year instead and the method below we're going to uh, aggregate it in a different method so I don't need this. So let's examine this really quickly. And here we go. And as you can see, we have our entire data range. Um, if we zoom in, 
we can see in terms of the returns, which are calculated as a percentage, by the way, and formatted correctly, uh, we can see that we have all of our values right here in terms of the day, month, and year, except it's labeled by number instead. Um, and this is by week on the x-axis. So this gives you an idea of what you're capable of doing within a, a ggplot in terms of unique graphs, because this is pretty unique. Um, now we can also examine this in a different facet. So um, let's use this, and we're going to create all this data again. And what we're going to do is run this really quickly, and you're going to see it aggregated in a different way. Um, so if we wait for a sec, and here we go. So let's zoom in. Now, as you can see, it's formatted a little bit nicely, uh, or more nicely. So we have it by month on the top right here, and then we have it by year on the secondary axis right here, and then we have it by day as well, um, and then we have the week of the month right here categorized by number. Um, so this is a little bit better of a representation. You can see it in a different facet. Um, but it's the same idea, and this is a little more presentation ready. So again, this is kind of the idea behind the calendar heat map. Um, really, really cool function. So let's just save that really quickly. Um, now correlation, this is really cool as well. So we can create a heat map for correlation as well. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with a heat map and just generally what it looks like. Um, so if we were to run all of this all together, I think the only one we need to import is ggcore plot. So let's do that really quickly. So tickers, we're going to import a vector of, or uh, create a vector of tickers, excuse me, uh, and then calculate returns. And we're just going to do this. And we have to melt the correlation matrix um, in order for ggplot to understand it as well, because this is going to be a ggplot uh, function. So let's do this really quickly. And what we can do is go down here, and I want to show you guys first the correlogram. There we go. Um, this is really cool within R. Um, so what we're going to do is run this really quickly, and boom, right here, that is a correlogram. I think that looks way better than a traditional correlation matrix um, and a heat map for that matter. It's just really cool. Uh, so we, if we zoom in, we can see right here, it's the same idea as the heat map, but we also have the variable uh, size as well for each uh, correlation between uh, each asset. Um, now, this is a really, really cool function in terms of the correlation. Uh, just if anyone didn't know, we're using a Pearson correlation coefficient here. And what we have, we have values from one to negative one. So what one or the green indicates um, is essentially that the correlations are high. So we could probably reverse this order. So we want to see the correlations that are, you know, negative in terms of they don't move in tandem as, as a green maybe in this case and then red would be the higher correlated value so when it's when the correlation is when we have perfect correlation as one the assets move directly in tandem basically when there are uh, when the uh, there's perfect uh, basically negative correlation that means essentially that the assets do not move at all in tandem so they would essentially diverge and we can see here the variable width gives an, uh, gives us a nice touch and brings out a lot of the relationships we want to see um, a lot of the stronger relationships. So this is a really cool way uh, to output a correlation matrix in R. Um, now another way to do it, and this this actual uh, script in terms of everything right here, I got. I'm going to show you the website. Uh, STHDA had. I don't know who wrote it, but it was a great post on. Uh, manipulating the correlation matrix. So it's not just a regular heat map like this, what we would do here. He organized it as well. He created a function, or, or she did, um, created a function in order to uh, organize the data in terms of the higher correlated uh, assets or whatever he's looking at on the outside and the lower correlated assets on the inside. So I thought this was really cool. Threw it in here. I'm not going to throw it on the website, but I'm just giving you guys an idea of it. So if we run all this, let's do that really quickly and boom there we go so yeah we can see an organized correlation matrix that is absolutely awesome um, I should probably get rid of the labels um, but this is uh, kind of the idea behind it and we can really really uh, bring out some of the relationships within R in terms of correlation and graphing um, so the last one and arguably the coolest one to me is the violin chart and this gives you an idea of the distribution of your data um, so what we can do is import all of this 
again and we're going to create our calendar returns table it's the same uh, I'm actually importing the same stock too from Yahoo Finance uh, so actually what I should do this is not I'm going to do get symbols I shouldn't be using the source as Yahoo and Google so let me import that again I'm just going to change the source really quick I think it's the extension get symbols dot google let's try this one more time oh that's yahoo finance notation so you know what um that's only available to uh, the s p data from yahoo finance basically so let me just delete this again noticed a mistake my mistake import this all over again and boom that's a lot better uh, so we have our data for the S&P 500 uh, and what we want to do is remove the unnecessary columns as well so by the way I don't know if I said this before but if we look at calendar returns right here we have a column called monthly returns which is basically the aggregate um, we don't need that so I just want the months and all their values so we can drop that column and then what I'm going to do is uh, essentially transpose this and make it so that we're going to be uh, aggregating all this data by month we can do it by year as well but and then we're gonna plot this and you're gonna see the magic that happens and this is really really cool so this is giving you an idea of seasonality of returns of stock returns specifically and we're also adding a median and quartile range as well so what does this basically represent so the cool thing about the violin plot is that it's a variable width um, so this gives you an idea of where a lot of the distribution of the data is centered around. So right here, we can see that the data is sort of fat around zero. So we can hazard a guess that a lot of the returns are centered around that uh, specific point. Okay. Now right here, we can see a lot of the returns are centered around, it looks to be, uh, I would say, anywhere from 2 to 3%. And we can see that a lot of the data is, is aggregated in, in that sense, um, or not aggregated, excuse me, distributed around that sort of range. So this gives you an idea of the distribution of your data, and not only that, it gives you an idea of the minimum and maximum as well. We can add a median and quartile range to uh, accompany it as well. So, and this is just really, really cool. It gives you an idea of the seasonality of, of the trends, and this data is going back pretty far. So this is going back to 2000. Uh, so this is really, really, really cool um, in, in R, really, really cool. And again, we can add a whole bunch of stuff to this violin chart, but again, what I want you guys to understand is that it gives you the distribution, a sense of the distribution of your data more than anything else. And this, again, would go terrific in a presentation. So this has uh, been just a pretty broad overview of the different graphing capabilities in terms of at least stock data that you can uh, explore with an R and GG plot. Uh, now, there's so many more capabilities, and the great thing about this is that you guys can explore and you want to manipulate these yourselves. And the cool thing is, is that it's really, really enjoyable to output and create custom graphs that look good and that you might be putting in reports or something like that. And you can literally just play with it for hours, and it's honestly an awesome process. One of the coolest things are, in my opinion, it has better graphing capabilities than any other language. No disrespect to Python and Matplotlib. I love that package as well, but R, in my opinion, is head over heels above the rest. And at least for stock data, this is able to beautifully display it. So this has been your tutorial, guys, um, slash showing. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please rate, comment, and subscribe. And check out my website. And yeah, have a good one.